this this week's going to be a really fun episode as well. Welcome to the show this week. We're going to be talking today about a trend that's returning to the marketplace. Everything comes full circle in real estate. Absolutely. I mean, there's different. So, let's, I mean, before we get into it, there's a lot of difficulties maybe if you're a buyer in today's marketplace. It's very competitive, um, especially if you're looking at a higher price point. You might have a home to sell to use the equity in that purchase or in that sale to buy. And when you're buying not in, a, in a contingent environment, it's really, really difficult to get an offer accepted. Sometimes you have to be non-contingent. So are there different options available? Are there different options available for the buyer? Is there different options available for the seller? So we're going to talk about creative options that we're going to be seeing maybe coming up here, if not already seeing. I know Philip on our team seeing some stuff. Uh, so we're going to talk about stuff, maybe some more orthodox options that you might not have heard of. I think Lane's absolutely right. And what we wanted to do today is just kind of expand the mindset a little bit. That's what we're all about is creative options to get buyers and sellers together. And the key on every transaction is that it is a win-win. Many times people think, well, one side is going to lose and that's not how it works. It can be a win-win. The buyer can still get the price and terms that work for them and the seller can still feel like they've won by getting the highest price and terms that work for them as well. I think that's one of the key factors with putting all of these options together. It's creating the end result that works for both parties. And that's what creates a smooth transaction. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's the first option that we're going to be discussing today? Let's take a look. Lease to purchase options. And this is a term that takes me all the way back to <clears throat> 1988 when I first started <laughs> in the business. Uh, we know Lane wasn't even a twinkle in his mother's eye at that point in time. But these were fairly popular uh, back then, and we did a fair amount of them. And they've always been something that kind of percolates in buyers' minds. I have to tell you, every year we'll have buyers that ask us about, gosh, we love this house. We're maybe six months, a year away from actually pulling the trigger, from having the, the funds for the down payment. Is there a seller that would perhaps allow us to sign a contract where we uh, have a lease for a certain set period of time and then we exercise a purchase option at the end of that lease? Now, Scott, may I, with your permission, may I read the Investopedia definition on rent to own? I want you to do that right now. I was just giving the 30,000 foot view <laughs> and I knew Lane, Mr. You know, Lane is our analysis guru. Of course, he would have the definition handy. Thank you, I sir. I have to have the definition handy. So a rent to own agreement in which you rent a home for a certain amount of time with the option to buy it before the lease expires. Rent to own agreements consist of two parts, a standard lease agreement and an option to buy. Perfect. Shall All we right. elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we can definitely uh, elaborate that. Uh, basically, when I first started, maybe eight years ago, we I started seeing these a little bit more where um, you know maybe a buyer doesn't have a down payment or they need to come up with some creative financing options to be able to own, but they know that they want to own down the road. So they set up some sort of a lease agreement and you can do it in a couple of different ways. You can set up the lease agreement to where that monthly rent goes towards the down payment. Uh, when you and you have basically the first right of refusal to buy when that lease expires. So what the benefit of the seller is, is maybe they can charge a little bit of a premium lease, knowing that they're going to be selling two years down the road. And they have to, um, you know, sometimes you might be thinking, does the price need to be set on the lease agreement? And that, that, that might not always be the case. Yes, you can probably do that. But also you can put something in the lease agreement to where you can set the price at the market price when the lease expires. So that way, um, you know, you love this house, you know, you want to purchase this home, but then the seller doesn't want to undersell it. And the seller wants, if, if it's a seller's market, like it is right now, maybe they don't feel like they, um, uh, they don't want to, you know, price it under and they want to make the most that they can from the sale. Absolutely. And I think the key on something like this is that nothing is set in stone. All of the things that we're talking today, uh, are flexible it's one of those things where it's literally a buyer and seller and their agents getting together on a Zoom, probably these days on a Zoom call or on a virtual conference table and just kind of hammer things out. For any of these types of things to work, you have to kind of have a meeting of the minds and there has to be a reason why the individual plans can work for each side. And Lane's talking about the buyer side. Why would a seller want to do uh, a lease back? Well, one of the things is if the home is has been an investment property, maybe the seller is waiting to have the, uh, there's a certain time frame in which they need to sell to uh, realize certain uh, tax benefits or whatnot. And they're, they need to hold on to the home for another six months or another year to be able to realize those benefits. But yet they've already decided 
where they want to move for the next house. If this was an owner occupied home, for example, so they're willing to move out. They have the wherewithal to move on to the next page of life. But for whatever reason, their timing isn't there to sell the house right now. Um, and so this will often be something that can work for them. They get a good tenant in the house paying a premium. And as Lane mentioned, we have caveats in there that protect them from a market downturn, you know, or an upturn. Sometimes if the market were to go down, the buyer would you think, well, gosh, the buyer is going to go out. You can actually have uh, ceilings or, or floors, if you will, with regards to if there's a bit of depreciation as well. So again, you've got to have a buyer that really, really loves the home and, and wants to have the home. And as always, there's some risks involved. There's, there's, there's going to be some outs for that buyer. So you've got to realize if the purchase were not fully executed, have you received enough benefit in that interim time to have made it worthwhile? Yeah. And, and I'm not an attorney, but my best piece of advice, if you're going to go this option is get everything, whatever, no matter what detail, large or small in writing, make sure it's in writing. So in almost every scenario that you can think of, it has been addressed. So that way, you know, if you do, re if you do come across that particular scenario, you know how to overcome it and what's, and whatever is in writing is what's going to be executed. Absolutely. I think that that's the key. The key is everything in, is right is in writing up front. You line out uh, no matter which side you're on buying or selling, you line out all the pros and cons as to why this may or may not work for you. And let's be very clear on all of these options that we're talking about today. This is probably representing less than 5% of transactions, maybe even less than that. However, for that buyer and seller where it can work, it can mean everything. Yeah, absolutely.